Well, it is past 10 here at the Big J, so that usually means that we had a busy night. And ladies and gentlemen, a busy night is an understatement. It was a matter of fact, a roller coaster night. So I'm gonna get to the highlights so you can find out why. The heat races got started with the Farmers Union Co-op Chargers who had last week off. Nate Valente in the 52 kicked things off by taking the lead. Valente, who was driving Dale Kimberly's car from one year ago, had a mirror full of Kyle Burkholder and Scott Mitchell behind him. Then, after lap one, Mitchell went to the outside, taking the lead away from Valente. Mitchell would add to his lead over Valente and take the first heat race of the night. Now the green flag for heat race number two. Carly Audi, the daughter of Martellus Pharmacy late model driver, along with the winningest driver in Jennerstown history, Barry Audi fell back quickly at the start and Evan Niber in the blue number seven took advantage. But the other seven, Steven Singo in the red and black car was challenging Nybert for the lead. With five laps to go, Singo got to Nybert and passed him coming out of turn four. Singo would hold off Nybert for his first heat win of the season. Next up to the plate were the one-stop auto sales pro stocks with Dale Kimberly leading the field to green. Kimberly would jump out to the lead, but this new division here at Jennerstown has some fast cars, so Kimberly had to put up a good fight. On the final lap, David Campbell, who was on the bumper of Dale all race, did everything he could to run him down. But it was Dale Kimberly holding him off and picking up the win. And with just one heat race for the One Stop Auto Sales Pro Stocks, it was now time for the two heat races for the Somerset Trust Fast and Furious Fours. And the two cars that battled for the win last week, Jeff Vassis and Michael Saylor rocketed to the front and dashed away from the field. Saylor did have the advantage and Vassos just could not find another gear as Michael Saylor remains undefeated in heat races this season through three Saturdays. Off to Furious race number two as the field scattered coming to the checkers for the first time. And in the turn one, Michael Saylor was already a few car lengths ahead of the field. As the other cars were battling for position, it was a smooth Saturday night drive for Michael Strauss as he would pick up the win by about half the straightaway. Now onto the track were the Martellus Pharmacy late models. For heat race number one, it was Jared Barclay and Mike Hemminger on the front row. They would battle door to door, turn after turn around the track looking for the number one spot. Then defending track second runner up Teddy Gabala and Joe Maruka were looking to join the party. With eight laps to go, Hemminger tried to make it stick on the outside, but Jared Barclay held his ground on the inside. Two laps later, Hemminger made it work by taking sole possession of the lead down the front stretch. Barclay was still holding strong on the inside, while Teddy Gabala was searching to get up front. Now to the final lap in turn two. Hemminger, with help from Gabala, accelerated down the back stretch. And onto the final turns, Barclay could not keep it on the inside as Hemminger picked up the win in a thrilling finish after he and Barclay battled for all 10 laps. Now it's time for heat race number two with Barry Audi and Todd Price on the front row. Barry Audi would come around to lead lap number one and extend his lead over Zane Farrell. Then suddenly, all the eyes at the track were turned away from the lead battle when this happened. After colliding with Owen Howe, late model rookie Aaron Van Fleet barrel rolled onto the other side of the wall in one of the most wildest crashes in recent memory at the track. Emergency crews were on the scene immediately as Aaron Van Fleet jumped out of his car with a roar of relief from the crowd. Van Fleet's car was destroyed in the wreck as his night was clearly done. Van Fleet said after the race is concluded, he was okay, but sore. On the restart, Audi and Farrell were door to door down the back straightaway. As in the first heat race, there was a side-by-side -side battle for first as Todd Price looked to join in on the fun. Price tried to go three wide but couldn't cash in as Audi in the 75 and Farrell in the 14 continued the battle for first. 
Back in 2019, Farrell and Audi had a photo finish at the line in a feature race. It took a few minutes to decide a winner and it would end up being Farrell. But coming out of turn two with five laps to go, Farrell had the advantage on Audi, but he would not go away lightly. After all, Audi is the winningest driver in track history. Then with three laps to go, after Farrell got around Audi, the second caution of the heat race came out as Owen Hout was stuck in turn four. Back to the restart, with two laps to go, Farrell got around Audi once again down the back stretch. Audi could not gain the momentum as Zane Farrell picked up the win in a wild and crazy heat race. Now off to the final heat races with the Stoystown Auto Records Modifieds with defending track champion Anthony Aiello leading the field to green. It was all Aiello to start, but with six laps to go, Jim Bosniak in the two, Brad Milburn in the 95, and the three of Joey School spun out in turn one to bring out the caution. Onto the restart, it was Aiello and Jason Bush on the front row. Aiello did not miss a beat as he easily got back up front. Aiello would go on to extend his lead and win as he remains undefeated in heat races this year. Now onto the second modified race and the last of the heats. It was John Fama jumping out to the lead with Doug Glessner behind him. Glessner tried to do everything he could to get around Fama, but the 55 did a terrific job holding off the 17. Glessner had one final push on the last turn, but Fama would hold on to get the win to end a wild start of the Saturday night at Jennerstown to begin week number three of the season. Now time to move on to the features with the Farmers Union co-op chargers up first. The features were started off with a three-wide battle at the stripe as Nate Valente got a head start starting third. The start was halted as Valente had to move to the back and he had a message for Scott Mitchell on the way there. Now for the second time, it was Steven Singo jumping out to the lead with a three-car battle for second. Then going into turn one, Justin Franton in the 66 got loose and sideswiped Kyle Burkholder and Nate Valente had nowhere to go as the caution came out, and as you could see, Kyle Burkholder's side was completely torn off when he made the collision with Frampton. He was able to return to the race, however. On to the restart. Steven Singo got up front, but not even one lap completed, and Scott Mitchell took the lead away in turns three and four. While Evan Nyberg was holding third and Singo second, Scott Mitchell piled onto his lead. Nate Valente was able to gain some speed and get Nyberg for third. And Kyle Burkholder, with nothing on his right side panel, was able to catch Nyber for fourth. But Scott Mitchell, off of the dominating restart, built his lead to about half a straightaway as he picked up his first feature win of the season. Now off to the feature for the One Stop Auto Sales Pro Stocks. Dale Kimberly started on the pole in the 20-lap feature, but it was Jeff Gals in the 50 jumping out to the early lead. Kimberly with Chris Brink and the 7 were jumping door to door when the caution came out for Patrick Parlock, who was slow on the backstretch. On to the restart. Gals got in front of Brink and David Campbell in the 77. And you also cannot count out third generation driver Will Hemminger in the 76, who was holding the fourth spot after getting around Dale Kimberly. Hemminger would then get past Campbell to take third, to going down the backstretch. Hemminger, who not to mention starting last in the race, was looking to take second away from Gals, and that's what he did. It was now the Brink and Hemminger show as they were dashing away from Gals in third. With seven laps to go, Hemminger was working his marks to try to get to the bumper of Brink. Entering turn three with two to go, Hemminger was on the edge of getting to Brink as Hemminger was working the inside while Brink was on the outside. And then to the white flag. Hemminger got to the side of Brink in turn one as they were door the door down the back stretch for the final time. Then in turn four, Hemminger got the jump on the inside as they went to the line almost door to door as the 15 year old went to Stoney's victory lane for the second week in a row. Next on the list were the Somerset Trust Fast and Furious Force. Michael Mull started on the pole with Caleb Vassis next to him. After the field completed lap number one, there was a four-wide mix-up in turn one, which brought out the first caution when the three of Stephen Lincoln got into the 14 of Dustin Nutter as he hit the outside wall. Nutter would be done as his car was towed into the pits. On to the restart. It was once again Mole and Caleb Vassis on the front row. Vassis would be the one jumping out to the lead. 
Then on the back stretch, Michael Saylor and Caleb's brother Jeff flew past Molo and Saylor got to the inside of Caleb to take the lead. To the back stretch, Jeff was able to clear his brother for second. Now, it was the two cars that dominated their heat race from earlier in the evening as Saylor's lead continued to get bigger. Vassis could not run down Saylor as Jeff Vassis' undefeated feature win streak in 2021 was broken as Michael Saylor picks up the win as he takes the points lead from Vassis by only two points. Now it was the Martellus Pharmacy late models turn to hit the track as Jeremy Schaefer and Joe Maruka were on the front row. Schaefer in the 16 wasted no time as he cleared Maruka coming out of turn two. While Gary Wiltrout was trying to get up the Schaefer, Teddy Gabala had problems so he was forced to enter the pits. After a few laps, Will Trout got to the bumper of Schaefer and was looking for a place to go to get around him. Then in turn 3, it was the 95 taking the lead from Schaefer 12 laps into the race. Schaefer and Will Trout built a significant lead to begin the race, so without a caution, it was difficult for the rest of the field to get up front. Will Trout was stretching out more and more from Schaefer as he could not find another gear to run Will Trout down. Into the final turn, with nobody in distance, the Gary Wiltrout show was concluded in dominating fashion as he picks up his first feature win of the season, and the crowd got a special treat as Aaron Van Fleet waved to the crowd in Stoney's victory lane. Now it was time for the Stoystown Auto Records Modifies, with Jeff Barclay in the 74 and Brad Milburn in the 95 leading the field to green. Going into the backstretch for the second time, RJ DeLappy made contact with Barkley, spinning him out to wave the first caution. Dustin Gursky was involved in the incident, but both cars stayed in the race. On to the restart. RJ DeLappy, who had three feature wins last year, was riding up front when Tom Golick in the 98 and last week's feature winner got to the bumper of DeLappy. When the caution came out for the second time for a spin out in turn three involving Adam Henry in the 62, Cindy Shawless in the 83, and Jason Bush in the 42. On to the second restart of the race. Golick got a huge push from Anthony Aiello, but for the second time tonight, a restart had to be redoed. Trying it again, Aiello was behind Golick once again as he passed the lap beat and took sole possession of the lead. Golick was making terrific timing as he pushed his modified away from the pack. But Golick's dominating night had to be tested as, with under five laps to go, Anthony Aiello and RJ DeLappy were near John Fama to bring out the third caution of the feature. Fama had to go into the pits as sparks flew under his car and he was showing his displeasure on the track when he got out of his car. On the restart, with four laps to go to the side it with Golick on the inside and Aiello on the outside. Golick got a great start as he immediately took the lead in turn one. Golick would go around the turns with no issues as he picks up the win for the second week in a row to conclude the regular feature events with still one more race left. That's right my friends, it was the four cylinder enduro presented by Shane Schaefer Incorporated. The 50 lap race was made up by only five cars as the field was led to green with Harley Wilson in the four and Nick Nemec in the 819 on the front row. The field stayed together for the first lap then things started to get crazy as Nemec made contact with the 37 of James Thompson. However, since it is an enduro, there are no cautions, so the field continued racing. Then on the front stretch, Thompson made contact with the 67 of Austin Connor, spinning him out and taking his front fender and a billboard with him. The red flag was flown to get the fender and billboard off of the track, and the field throttled up where they were sitting. As everyone accelerated, Harley Wilson was leading, but the four cars left on the track were on the way. While Thompson and the 59 of Cal Beckett were fighting for third, Nemec got to the bumper of Wilson and passed him with ease. After that, it was all Nick Nemec, as he would hold on to win as only three cars finished the race, but nonetheless, that still concludes a roller coaster night of racing at Jennerstown. And if I may speak for everybody that was at the track tonight, everybody took a huge breath when Aaron Van Fleet jumped out of that car, and we all are so relieved and so happy that he is okay. And folks, you might want to clear your schedule for next Saturday because the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Series makes a return to the Big J for the 2021 season. You will not want to miss it. So if you can, please be in the grandstands 
here next Saturday with us.